What would it mean to you to move better and feel better? If you're someone with chronic pain, limited mobility, maybe recovering from an injury or accident, finding that traditional therapies just aren't quite giving you that extra mile that you're hoping to get, or maybe you're wanting to be able to do things you've never been able to do. And for everybody, that's different, of course, right? Maybe you wanna be able to do a squat. Maybe somebody else wants to be able to walk down the block. Maybe you wanna be able to get up and down from the ground and play with your grandkids. Maybe you wanna play tennis, golf, pickleball. Hi, I'm Cynthia Allen. And I'm the host of this year's Move Better, Feel Better Summit, where we explore the Feldenkrais Method and more, a lot more. When you're someone who has come across a challenge and you need to be able to find your way out of it, it's very important that you have more tools than just the traditional uh, things that are on the menu in the healthcare environment. And that goes for mental health, as well as physical health. Those important things on the menu, your doctor, your physical therapist, your drugs, your occupational therapist, these are, these are valuable. They're for sure needed and valuable. But sometimes we need something that goes a little bit deeper that begins to help us undo the habits of how we think and how we physically move. Both are really movements, right? Emotion as well as moving across the room. They're both movements. And it turns out that our brain is super in charge of this. So we have a summit that's going to help you unlock, unravel some of those habitual ways of being that have started to get in your way that are maybe just not serving you well. in this 10-day summit starting September 15, 2022. This is our seventh summit, and we kind of know what we're doing by now. The uh, accolades that we receive are huge, and we hope that you will join us in this free virtual online event. We're going to start off day one really digging into some of these items, such as how to make new neural connections to solve these old problems with one of our Feldenkrais trainers, Elisa Stewart. And then we also have poet, author, Sophie Strand, speaking on being numerous, body ecologies, and the intelligence of the interstitial. So we really are going to cover a range, as you can tell, with these two topics right away on the keynote day, um, from the more metaphorical and the deeper questions about meanings in life and connections in our relationships, as well as how to get up and down off the floor, how to make it easier, how to find a way out of those chronic pain habits or anxiety, things that really do get in our way. I want to share with you some words that have come from past participants Nadine Feldman says, I love this summit and appreciate all the pearls of wisdom shared by the speakers. Enjoy the daily focus and the variety of perspectives. Well, what is she talking about when she says daily themes? Well, we do. We have daily themes. After we have that big kick, kick off with our keynote day, we have free your mind, the great outdoors, self-image, balance, grounding, bone health presence and pastimes, connections, posture or action. Each day there's three to four talks that often have embedded into them movement lessons. And if you've never done the Feldenkrais method or methods that are compatible with it, you might really be surprised at how much you can benefit you can get from even doing 10 or 15 minutes of movements with awareness expertly guided. But also every day from days two through 10, actually at daily two through 10, we will have four movement lessons being taught by four different teachers. And they're gonna be on these tracks around back pain, knees and ankles, the rounded upper back, neck and shoulders. 
We have expert Feldenkrais practitioners like David Zamak Burson addressing the issue of anxiety and stress. Either you get away or you're somebody's meal. And so that response is something that we use as an animal that we use maybe two or three times in our life. That's not what happens for us. We grow, we're in a very, very different environment. It, mind you, we're in a different environment, but we have basically the same physiology to which you could make the case we are ill-fitted. So I think something like awareness through movement, the Feldenkrais method, and I would add meditation, and I would add maybe vigorous exercise, all of these things are able to interrupt the physical hormonal effects of prolonged stress or sustained anxiety. Elizabeth Beringer, the self-image in action. I like to think of an educated core rather than a strong core. But you know, you want to be able to do all kinds of things and and use your core and not be over stressing the the periphery. And you know, my stomach's always been a little round. I I feel I feel like I you know I couldn't have really had much stronger of a core when I was a fanatic Aikidoist, and my stomach was always round. So there's there's no contradiction there between having a strong core and having a rounded stomach. It's an infectious idea that is not only destructive but wrong, actually. Merrick Wyszynski on preventing and managing arthritis. He's really going to focus in on those hips and knees. When I work with clients with arthritis or, in fact, any type of injury. I think of two important ideas. One is that the joint surfaces, the joints are connections, how one bone connects with another bone. The joint surfaces ideally will be parallel to each other, not crooked, but parallel. The second important idea that I carry with me all the time when working with people is finding the center of your joints, finding where's the center of your hip? How are you loading? Are you loading through the center? When you use your shoulder, are you pushing with a shoulder aligned in such a way where the ball of the joint sits right in the cup? Or is there a room for improvement? So when it comes to parallel articular surfaces, what I mean here is avoiding gapping, like this bad, poor knee. If you look at the line of the thigh, the line of the thigh is pretty much like I made a line here with a perpendicular joint surface. But then the lower leg, the shin, is at an angle. This is a little bit of a knock knee situation. And that creates compression on the lateral side here, but also ripping or tearing or overstretching of the tissues like menisci, like ligaments on the inside part. We also have some incredible people speaking that aren't Feldenkrais practitioners that really bring a unique perspective. Linda Tellington Jones is gonna be talking about our self image and well being as we age. Joanne McFarlane on how to save your own life. Wow. I got to tell you, I've heard her talk. She's very good. You know, I, I, I say to people, you know, you, the artifact is the painting. But that's not why I'm an artist. I'm in love with the, what my body is doing. It's the most erotic thing I can think of. And that was what I knew when I was a girl. And that is what, for reasons which I do not understand, which I think is under assault by the culture all the time, this erotic desire and love affair with how our bodies and spirits move in space. And you only have a little time to do it. So that's what I do. Turner Osler 
an MD who is going to come let us know really like what is the deal with with sitting? Is it really the big deal we've been made out to be? And solutions, if it is, solutions on how to address that. We were pretty much a squatting population until really just a few hundred years ago. And even then, people didn't spend a lot of time sitting. They just spent less time squatting. Interestingly, the Hadza, the, you know, one of the few hunter-gatherer tribes that still exist in, uh, on Earth, and they live in Tanzania, still squat. They don't, they don't sit. So if you go observe the, the Hadza, they, they, they basically don't sit. Unless you show them a camp chair, in which case they're all in. They, they only don't sit because they didn't know they could. Once they discover it, they love it like the rest of us. Yeah, it's such an interesting thing about humans, isn't it? Where we all are really uh, fascinated with whatever feels like less work. No, like, and, 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 it's, and it makes hard. perfect evolution sense because we're trying to save energy. So less work is like our go-to strategy. It's, it's not that we're lazy, it's that we're clever. Dr. Paul Lamb really the founder of adapting Tai Chi for arthritis will be with us. And he is delightful. Liz Koch, she's going to speak on the wild psoas, an echo messenger for landing and locating. So embryology tells a different story. It tells a story of the cell, of living process, not object. Cadavers are objects at this point. They're forms, they're shape, they're what's left. Embryology is a living process. It's about how do we keep reshaping our cells dissolve? How do we keep showing up as Liz? You know, like, how does that happen? Um, and it's an infolding and an unfolding and a constant conversation. So spine isn't a column. It's not a structure. It's a living river. It's a, it's a tubular organism like a caterpillar. And so when we return to this idea of thinking of so as, as an organ of perception, rather than trying to put it in one of those conceptual boxes, because that's what they are, they're boxes uh, of, you know, this is what this is, you know, naming the object and look at ourselves as a living process. Then we start relating to the core of our being as the Taoists call the so as is the muscle of your soul. Mm, Candia Raquel is going to help us understand the sensual pleasure of awareness. And Dr. Ken Silvestri will be driving into how to collaborate positively and change, make a change in the world. So you can see we're going to really cover a lot of different pieces and aspects of, of being human and getting the most out of this life, right? We all have challenges that we come up against and sometimes we just need a little extra help. These talks are filled with actionable, useful information. We have Gabriel Pullen who's really taking the issue actually of grief and talking about how to make your inner landscape a utopia. And Francine Bonjour Carter on letter writing and how you can use that as an embodied experience. Dr. Jen Christman is gonna get into imposter syndrome and the shining beyond the fear of inadequacy. Really, you know, we have to focus on discernment and sometimes having good mentorship or a teacher or um, someone who you can turn to who can give you healthy, appropriate feedback. Because you're right, that, that piece of qualification it has two parts. It has the actual technical learning and knowledge acquiring. It then, and then it also has experience, right? Those two come together. Mm -hmm. and, and so there are gonna be times where I have imposter syndrome because I did just get out of school or I just finished my training, but I haven't been working with enough clients yet to really hone in and embody my, my internal wisdom right the difference between knowing and having wisdom mm -hmm. and we get that from experience and so sometimes we have the experience we have the training we have the knowledge and we're still not feeling good enough and so it can be helpful to have someone who knows us who can look at us who we can speak to honestly who can say you know i think you just need to get out there and practice more or i think this is a deeper uh 
healing that is being asked for you to explore within yourself. Lynn Quiring is an interesting pharmacist who decided that maybe traditional medicine wasn't doing what he thought it was doing after owning this, uh, after owning pharmaceutical practices and uh, seeing that people just didn't get all that much better on all the drugs. So he wants to help us understand bone health from that perspective. And Sherry Lee will be getting into kayaking and self-development while Larry Wells will be covering the psychoneurology of getting the life you want. It sounds good, doesn't it? And there's some of those things that you'll be interested in and some of them that you won't, but hey, it doesn't matter because it's free and you get to choose which days you wanna tune into. And you can watch any single day's talks for 48 hours. So there really is no such thing as a bad time zone. I know I'm really looking forward to doing the daily awareness through movement lessons because when you move slowly with attention and you're guided in a way that it light and wakes up your brain, wakes up your brain and allows you to really examine what are some new possibilities for how I can move? It's, it's pretty transformative. That's why I decided to become a practitioner. It is transformative. Anna attended last year and she wrote, I wanna thank you deeply, the teaching of your summit, your wisdom, your caring, your listening, your rich questions, the exchange, exchanges were all truly inspiring. And she just went on to talk about how she had felt already so many subtle changes and acuity and perception, not only physically, but also personal and cognitively, a shift in her way of being and engaging with her own reality. Wow, that's wonderful, Anna. And I'm so glad for you that that happened out of last year's summit. And I think we can count on Anna wanting to return this year. So I hope you will give it some thought. Yeah, maybe you wanna carve out a day or two and attend this incredibly rich opportunity to change the way things have been. You know, we often just accept that this is the reality and we have to live with it. But maybe, just maybe, there's some small ways that if you were guided in them, it would start to make a really positive difference in your life. We also find that somatic practitioners or rehab practitioners, wellness practitioners, movement teachers love our conferences. They find clues and ideas, not only for their own bodies, because their bodies also get a little wore down by the work that they do, but they also find clues for how to work with their clients differently, both in mindset, as well as languaging, and maybe just taking more time in a particular movement sequence or exercise to help somebody find that blind spot that they just keep overlooking each time. Well, I wanna thank you for spending some time here with me to explore and um, I hope to see you inside the summit on September 15th.